featherweight champion, the GOAT of the division, the pound for pound, one of the best guys in the world, and Alexander Volkanovsky. All the right reasons why he's probably minus 400. On the other side here, you've got Yair Rodriguez, plus 285, elite level kickboxing, great footwork, all of those things. Now, the big thing here for me in this spot was really going to be the last fight with Alexander Volkanovsky versus Islam Makhachev. This was such an interesting fight. Him coming up in weight, fighting another champion, was the smaller guy, was able to wrestle, grapple, do all those things. And for me, I really kind of thought Islam would kind of have his way, utilize the grappling, keep him down. Yes, there would be some get-ups, but at least doing that. But Volkanovsky arguably won that fight, looked fantastic, and that definitely is why this line is completely swelling when you're fighting a guy like Islam and you're able to do those things. Because history tells us Yair Rodriguez is horrible off of his back. And Boyd has been exposed multiple times throughout his career. It all started back in 2017 against Frankie Edgar. Edgar took him down, mauled him in the first two rounds. That didn't look that good. Then the second fight with Jeremy Stevens. Stevens got battered on the feet, said, let me try to do that. Let me try to get these takedowns. He gets a takedown late. It ends up kind of looking good. But again, yeah, you got the victory. But the vulnerability of the takedowns are there. I think the most eye-opening takedown vulnerability was against Max Holloway. Max Holloway doesn't take down anybody, and he got multiple takedowns on Yair when things got a little tough. He took him down, controlled him, kept him there. Even, I believe, Josh Emmett, before he got knocked out, got a takedown. So this is a spot where I think Volkanovski can get some of these takedowns, can get some control time, and I don't think that he's going to be diving at legs for, you know, five rounds. I, I don't think he's going to be able to do that, but can he muscle him a little bit? Can he get in the clinch a little bit? I think he's going to be able to do that. Now, on the feet, Yair is absolutely dynamic the guy has an arsenal of kicking that may be top tier within the ufc but the thing that when you're looking at it is volkanovsky's style in which he fights really brings a lot of great things where the forward pressure the output the volume all those things are going to smother the kicker and again this is baked into the line a little bit of course where you've got a minus 400 but this stylistically moving him up keeping him close keeping a year on his back foot is going to make things very difficult to just get off that offense plus the fact that yair has shown to have some iffy cardio so you've got a guy that his explosivity really comes off of these kicks. That takes even more energy, more fuel for him to keep going with that. So I think that Volkanovski can really push that pace, get close, make it interesting. And early, I do think the first two rounds are going to be highly competitive. I think that's really where Yair is going to go for broke. And as this fight progresses, I think that's where Volkanovski starts to go over in those championship rounds. If you look at it, six of the last seven fights or Volkanovski went the full 25 minutes. So this is a guy that takes his time. Even the only knockout he had over that, or the finish he had over that, was against Korean Zombie. That was in the fourth round. So this is a spot here where I think that Volkanovski gets that victory. We're going to get off that minus 400 number. I think the most likely path is via points. Plus 110, I think, is a great number, great value. And I think it's the most likely way that Volkanovski keeps the belt.